Here are some thoughts on a hypothetical second American Civil War. Oh boy, this one is coming in hot. To some people, a second civil war sounds like alarmist language, and to that, I can't really fault them. In fact, I was among those people who were looking at right-wing factions threatening this big talk about a second civil war and thinking to myself, the loudest of the bunch of these bozos are among the fringe, and this idea of a second civil war will never catch on. I don't know about that now. For one, I don't like war, no matter what. I just don't like war, and I don't like the idea of waging such a war. And I think a lot of people listening in on this may agree that war doesn't sound like a good idea. But then we have to ask this fundamental question. Who is waging this supposed hypothetical second civil war? So if we are to entertain this idea and play around with the hypothetical, I think we need to look at what the first civil war was all about. Let's make no mistake, the first civil war was about maintaining chattel slavery. The short-lived Confederate States of America wanted to protect something that they had deemed as a state's right. And modern apologists for the Confederate States of America usually argue that they were defending a so-called heritage. What did they inherit though, exactly? And that is chattel slavery and the legalization of the commodification of an African proletariat working class building this empire from its own bloody feet. And it's important to remember that after the American Civil War in the 1800s, the South's economy collapsed, and that's because of their reliance on slave labor. Now, in the past, we have talked about how after the 13th Amendment was passed, there was a loophole in the amendment being that people who are quote-unquote duly convicted of a crime are still subjected to slave labor and it is legal to subject those people to slave labor. The supposed black codes that we are talking about here are laws that only black people can be convicted of. And this trend of redefining slavery under the judicial system to make such slave labor legal would evolve over time, such as the era of Jim Crow, all the way up to the Civil Rights Movement, and actually beyond with prison labor. So let's not make any mistakes here that when we're hearing the language of a supposed second civil war, we're not hearing the language of a bottoms-up grassroot movement to reclaim an oppressed nationalist identity. No, we're hearing the language that was used to defend chattel slavery. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think the fringe groups who are calling out for a second civil war are really people that we can be ignoring anymore. Many big-name media celebrities and high-ranking elected officials have called for a supposed second civil war. But I want to talk about perhaps maybe that we are already in a second civil war. Allow me to explain. Of course, the characteristics of this supposed civil war that we're currently in does not take the same effect or the same material conditions as the previous civil war. In fact, there are a lot of polarizing differences. We have to acknowledge that we are in the internet age and the smartphone age. The amount of damage that one person can inflict on another with just their mere smartphone is a lot greater than a single bullet from the 1800s. A smartphone is a very handy tool to gain intel or a profile of your enemy. This is why there are current bills trying to be passed, like in the state of Arizona, where recording police officers, especially within a certain distance, 
it's going to be rendered illegal, especially if that police officer is doing something that he shouldn't be doing, like racial profiling, pulling people over unjustly, extrajudicial murders, etc. And while the smartphone is obviously not the deadliest weapon, it can be, in fact, the handiest weapon, and thus even very accessible. Another thing to consider is this new trend of stochastic terrorism. Stochastic terrorism is a form of terrorism that is unpredictable, that you cannot exactly trace its origins or predict when such an event is going to happen. So if we were to identify when such a second civil war is going to take character, we have to ask ourselves, what would that look like? What form would that take place? Do we wait until the next presidential election where Andrew Tate takes a Weimar Republic swastika and puts it in the Oval Office for people to see? Do we wait for that to happen before we call this a second civil war? Or do we call that victory for a particular side that perhaps is waging this second civil war? Do we have to wait for a sequel for the Battle of Gettysburg? We already had such a battle that took place in Charlottesville in August of 2017. Which is quite fitting for what we're discussing here. We're discussing the Civil War, and Unite the Right rally was specifically an event that not only fostered a bunch of fascist fringe groups, white nationalists, and neo-Nazis all in one place, but they were there to defend a statue of a Confederate general by the name of Robert E. Lee. And, holy shit, if it's not transparent enough already, that should tell you everything. That should tell you who is waging this supposed hypothetical possible Second Civil War. I question the notion that they are defending so-called heritage. The only heritage that they are defending is chattel slavery, and maybe if we were to stretch it and give them the benefit of the doubt, the rapings of their sisters. And even giving these monsters even an ounce of grace, I don't think we can really give them that kind of grace. I think we would be doing so in extremely bad faith. So why give them that grace? Instead, they should be six feet in the ground. And we should be taking a hypothetical civil war threat seriously. I think we need to be taking it seriously. Even if there is no attempt at a large-scale secession between two sides of the continental U.S. of American Empire, I don't think that raising concern for a hypothetical Second Civil War is alarmist language at all. I think it's actually a pretty rational concern to have, especially with the rise of mass shootings now that COVID restrictions has lessened. And I think that the wave of legislation should raise some alarm bells for people who are listening as well, including anti-transgender laws, anti-abortion laws, the increasing control of schools all across the United States, especially with trans gender laws, especially with what is being taught to our children, such as Anne Frank being literally banned from Texas schools. And in the state of Florida, there will be a whole month, which is November, literally dedicated to teaching children about the victims of communism. By the way, who were the victims of communism? Uh, if I remember correctly, if we look into the history books of World War II, it was Nazis who were the victims of communism. But I digress, and I really just don't think that we are ready for that conversation yet. But even if we're not ready for that conversation, we have to have that conversation. And there are some hard-to-swallow pills that the mainstream just does not want to swallow. And I think that left-wing activists should very much start taking precautions to prepare for such a crazy event. 
even if it's not us who is waging such a war. I don't want this war to happen. I want this to fucking stop. But we don't have that choice. We don't live in that kind of luxury. It's important that you understand how to defend yourself and your family and your friends and your comrades. Get familiar with safety precautions and self-defense techniques. Especially if you're marginalized, you should have a safety plan with your friends and your loved ones. Does this mean buying a gun and learning how to use it? Not necessarily, but you should know how to use a gun, at the very minimum. Some people just don't want a gun, like myself. I don't want a gun, but I do know how to use a gun because I've had training and it's important to train regularly. One organization I would recommend is the John Brown Gun Club. There's also the Socialist Rifle Association, which I am a member of. I would recommend these two in particular if you're looking to do a grassroots form of armed self-defense and armed community defense. There's also the National African Gun Association and the Latino Rifle Association. But most importantly, I would recommend that y'all get organized in what I would consider to be affinity groups, and I may talk about that in the future one day in more detail. But one thing to keep in mind about affinity groups is that it can consist of your friends, it can consist of your families, but the one thing to keep in mind about affinity groups is that while they should be closely knit, they should be decentralized, meaning there should be no central leadership and it should be stretched out in a network. And what this does is that it makes it impossible for one whole centralized network to collapse as a whole unit. This is the very crux of the idea of decentralized organizing. Anyway, I'll talk about that more in a future episode, but just remember that a second civil war is not necessarily alarmist language. It is not something that should just be casted off as crazy conspiracy nuts. I think, yeah, crazy conspiracy nuts are taking this way too seriously and are trying to go on some revenge, great replacement bullshit shooting spree, but it also at the same time has resulted in things like Unite the Right, which took place in 2017, and the political stunt that took place on January 6, 2021 at the US Capitol. I think those are very serious threats, and while we can laugh at Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence equally because they are just two sides of the same coin, we have to remember that those kinds of people who are out for their blood are also out for other people's bloods, including some of ours. And that, my friend, is worth being concerned about. So when you hear of a hypothetical second civil war, think a little bit more critically that maybe, maybe this isn't something to blow off as just hot steam. Be concerned and be ready. Not for some Hopalong Cassidy cowboy adventure tale. No. Be ready to keep you and your family safe. Thank you. Hey y'all, uh, thank you for watching my video. Be sure to hit the bell, the subscription button, and everything else because I'm going to be making more content soon. Be sure to motherfucking subscribe and also help me out financially. Donate to my Ko-Fi.